Good day, colleagues. We begin our session on the development of the regions and universities. And that's actually part of the title of our session. Can a university become the driver of growth in the region? Or we can actually put it in a broader context. Can universities become a partner to develop not just one region, but the entire country? Because regions, along with universities, can become strong drivers behind economic growth thanks to their scientific research. So we'll have three blocks with three gurus of regional development and university development will have a head of a major university and the governor of that region where the university is located. We first wanted to have a kind of a battle or debates, but uh, during our preparations we realized it's not about a debate, it's not about a challenge, it's about working together hand in hand. There are sometimes uh, opinions are similar, but uh, we with Mr. Shana, who is my co-moderator, would definitely like to uh, have different perspectives uh, the perspective of the university and the perspective of the administration of a particular region. I don't want to waste time on introducing our panelists. I'd like to give the floor to Yevgeny, my co-moderator, and we'll go straight to questions. It's great that we start with the Tomsk region. The Tomsk region is one of the few or maybe a unique region where the governor chairs the supervisory council of two universities. So uh, we'll definitely focus on the Tomsk State University. Uh, yes, indeed, we thought so. we wanted to have a kind of a battle, a challenge, and, and maybe we'll have something. We also have a poll. The audience who's watching us online will vote. Do we need to be afraid that... Uh, There'll be a brain drain in that particular region. Answer A, you need to give the best education that will attract the best students from other regions. They will come and stay in your region. Answer B, best students will go to Moscow, St. Petersburg and abroad because the level of pay in a particular region is not motivating and appealing enough. And answer C, there could be a joint project between the government, other region and the university to provide the right conditions, competitive and appealing conditions so that they could stay in the region. So the answer is A, B and C. But while our audience uh, does the cast their balance, we will not waste any time and go straight to the questions. So I looked at the performance of the Tomsk region, growth, regional product and other economic indicators. What I see is that education is a major part uh, in your growth regional product compared uh, with other regions. So you're ahead of other regions by 1.52 times. Uh, Tomsk has historically has uh, been known as uh, a hub for higher education and you have a lot of uh, students that you attract and the share of research in the grass region product. The Tomsk region is also among the leaders. So currently the share of education is 4.5 percent. Do you have any plans to uh, increase the uh, share of uh, universities? The contribution of universities uh, in the regional economy even further. So what are your, what is your vision? Well, first I would like to uh, say Happy New Year. Finally, we're in 2021, 2020 is over. Okay, what a battle. You'll have a battle. You often mention that universities play a key role, but there are two types of universities. Each region should have a university that, is, that caters to local demands, you need to train the local staff, the uh, people that will work in the particular region. 
But the second type of universities, they could be the drivers of growth of that particular region, and you don't always have it in that particular region. So, back in the Soviet Union, we used to have like, equality everywhere. You have to have big universities in every region. But we know there are big centers in the US and in the UK, but there are like Oxford, MIT, but there are also small universities like in Chicago, in San Diego, and we're not aware of it. So, why do we need to create universities, establishments, which are not sustainable? You need to put funding where you have some kind of continuity, some kind of tradition and scientific legacy. So what is a scientific school? It needs at least 50 years to shape a school of thinking. I respect schools like Skoltek, but when I look at the amount of funding that's been put into it, well, I'm a bit disappointed because we have old universities in St. Petersburg, they are 150 years old. Take Tomsk. Actually, the scientific and education sector has a key role to play in the in our municipal affairs, it's also part of our charter, written down in our charter. So I don't believe that every region should have a university that will drive your growth. No, every region should have its own unique feature. If you're a tourist center, you need to rely on tourism. If you're an oil producing center, focus on oil. Well, we have a lot of IT companies, startups, more than 400, and we are a scientific and research and education hub. This is why we put a lot of focus on education. We want to leverage that. And this is why I chair the supervisory board of two universities. So what is growth? We do a lot of import substitution. We do a lot of other things. But you also need to do a lot of assembly. So you know, every university has its own vision, has its own ambitions. IT companies have their own visions. State corporations have their own vision. And regions have their own vision. So our shared jo job, the job of me as a governor and me as a university, should align all of these strategies and visions. Today, we're in a market economy. Unfortunately, there's no center that coordinates and aligns all of these strategies. If we go, if all go into different directions, we will not end up in an ideal place. So take Mr. Sechin or Mr. Miller, Sechin from Rosneft or Mr. Gazprom, from Mr. Miller from Gazprom. Do they ask me for advice when they draft their five-year strategies? No, they don't do it. For good or bad, back in the 1990s, the government would tell you, you pay salaries to your staff, it's good, continue to do it. Gazprom and other companies now have a lot of R&D centers, and we need to align their research with our research. We need to have some kind of clear vision, and regions should be in charge of aligning that. But do you have the potential, do you have the resources to do that? You say you have universities, you have IT clusters, you have major corporates that are, you cannot control due to the reasons we are all aware of. Apparently, as we talk to you and other regions, we see that governors do have that capacity, but can one governor unite everything and align all the strategies? Is there anyone who could help you, any other platform? Who could offer the same kind of capability? Where do you hold the dialogue between the different stakeholders? 
как правило, ну, там сам был чиновник, они, в общем, заняты I used to be a state official myself, and state officials, from what I know, are more about executing someone's orders. We don't really have dialogue at the level of a regional administration, but maybe you have a platform, or you can think of setting up such a platform. Well, there are a lot of amateurs who don't have the capacity, who don't know how to do it. So it's best that they keep out of that. If you don't have the capacity, don't do it. Again, as I said, every region should follow their own track. You can't have a one-size-fits-all model. So the Tomsk region would like to align IT companies, universities, administration and major corporates. So the first practical step is when we started import substitution, we were ahead of other regions for several years, actually. Five years ago, Gazprom purchased in Tomsk high-tech equipment for 200 million. Right now, we signed an agreement with Mr. Miller for a billion's worth of uh, purchases. Interrail, a, uh, a energy company, they purchased zero worth of equipment a couple of years ago, and right now they purchased billion's worth of equipment. So that's a high-tech uh, company, high-tech equipment that's produced in the Tomsk region. We also have a program called Inna Tomsk. It uh, unites 16 ministries and agencies to tackle Russia's biggest issue, which is interagency independence, like silo mentality. Everyone would like to, everyone works separately. And uh, this is why we wanted to unite all the efforts. And over the couple of years, we've worked to build one big university that would be a great organization and would align all of the elements, would put and piece together all these pieces of the puzzle to achieve one shared goal. Why? One university or one state corporation Cannot, cannot tackle the challenges of the modern world. If we want to move into the top ten of the leading powerhouses of the world, we need to start doing it. And uh, you know, there is a joke, uh, like a man comes to a cedar tree and uh, stands doing nothing, and uh, someone asks him, well, why, what, are you, what, what do you want? He says, I want to, uh, the cones, I want cedar cones for cedar nuts, and uh, I don't know how to do it. And the person tells him, oh, we just need to stop, start shaking the tree, so you need to start doing something. So you need to move to action, not just words. Yes, as we said, you have some driver of growth at the level of university and at the level of uh, minister, regional administration, so who were shaking that set of tree so that the cones would stop dropping down. So, well, our audience shared some advice to avoid silo mentality so that uh, all of the projects would uh, come true and that it would be aligned with your regional strategy. So we asked you questions, should we be afraid that there will be a brain drain from the region? Well, maybe someone woke up in Tomsk or maybe some are going to bed. But yes, indeed, there is a fear that people will leave the Tomsk region, 45%. They are afraid that people will leave from Moscow and St. Petersburg. But 35% still believe that there is a possibility there could be effective collaboration between business community, universities and the regional administration. So there is this kind of belief. As for pessimists, well, they are in the minority, actually. Eduard Vladimirovich, вот задали несколько вопросов. Okay. So we set the tone. We asked a couple of questions. Do you agree with this, Mr. Galajinsky? 
What can a university do for a region except for training the right staff building capacity? That's what I wanted to start with. You have universities and you have universities. So there are several types of universities. A university is a complex uh, socio-educational structure that helps to develop uh, the economy and the social strata. And it's a very complex uh, structure. And first in the Soviet times, they were split into industry-specific institutes and then they were brought again into bigger universities. So today, as we talk about universities, there are all different. Some are industry-specific, they focus on training a specific profession, but a big traditional university is threefold. They need to produce new innovations, research, then applying that research, doing something with that research, and third is to put that research into the economy. So initially, the university was to engage a lot of ethnic groups into the cultural environment of Russia to enlighten them. So actually, that third mission was uh, embedded back in Zoris times. Absolutely. So we put that mission in our roadmap. Now, 140 years ago, the Imperial University was opened. The Emperor could not come, but he sent a wire saying that we open not just a place where we will give knowledge and certificate a place where a, a region will develop culturally, spiritually, and that's part of the Russian Empire. That's what the Tsar said 140 years ago, so that idea was embedded in that process. And again, it's all very, it all it makes sense. Currently, we live in an environment where new technology replaces another, and knowledge-producing universities become the drivers of well-being, of prosperity of uh, <coughs> nations. This is why we have such huge focus on universities. The government tries to readjust universities to a system, to a framework where universities universities can not just uh, can, can uh, produce uh, economic growth, not just knowledge. So there are a lot of functions, uh, enlightenment, uh, education, well-being. So we are a stakeholder who provides for economic and social development of the region. So you have the administration, you have the business community and the public, and university could become the hub, the platform to bring them together. And every re every development depends on these three stakeholders, and we need to focus on it separately. And finally, we see new requirements set for universities. University needs to be tolerant, it needs to be uh, to provide expertise. You have project sessions with the business community, you have expert debates. University is the best platform, well, one of the platforms which could host these debates and definitely it sets new requirements uh, to universities. We need to rethink our function. You are absolutely true. So, so the governor shared uh, some history behind uh, of the university, and if you look at the global history, we can see that university be becomes an independent uh, place with their own spirit, with their own traditions, with their own goals. So they were really autonomous. There was a state within a state. They could take their own decisions. Let's be honest. You don't have as much independence as you used to have. There are some requirements set by the 
government. But as we discuss this issue today, we understand that a university is the window to the outer world and that can, uh, it's a link for the region to the outer world that would help to push the region to a bigger, higher level. Yes, definitely, some people believe that uh, there will be a brain drain. But what do you think? How critical is the brain drain issue? and what universities can do to reverse that. Well, if people are leaving, it means you give them good education. If uh, you're in a competitive in the global market, it means that uh, you have good education. So on the one hand, we want to boost the quality of education, but on the other hand, there is the risk that you can lose those uh, best uh, students. What's your take? Is there a risk to lose those best minds? Is that a question to me? Yes. Well, you always have that risk, and we need to strike that balance. Up to 30% used to be for students from other regions. Right now, it could be up to 80%. We became more transparent, more open, and we need to attract talents. The higher the concentration of talents, the more exciting it is for the business community and for uh, the regional administration. It also need to have systemic work to keep to retain that stuff and this is why the governor initiated new program we uh, nurture these talents uh, starting from schools so we need to create that environment it needs to be an intensive uh, environment appealing one companies come to us uh, looking for talented minds and that's also a way to keep them here and it's like micromanagement. You need to work hard to make this happen. Thank you. What we see in the Tomsk region, the efforts at the university level, the efforts at the regional level, is a model which is actually rolled out by the Ministry of Education. You need to build a big collaboration between the business community, the authorities and the region. So you need to attract local students and you need to provide the right conditions so that people would stay after they get a degree. So a question to you, Mr. Zhvachkin, what about the funding? Can we see PPPs at the level of uh, <coughs> universities <coughs> and regions? Well, definitely it is possible, but there are barriers. I have an impression that someone wants to do it the harder way, so to speak. Take PPPs. We were one of the first who built uh, kindergartens, preschool facilities with uh, gas prom. And then comes a law on PPP, and you cannot build anything under this law. Or either a university or even a shed in your backyard. So currently we have this big university program, a great university program. There are under other 12 uh, institutions uh, from the Russian Academy of Sciences uh, that are located in the Tomsk region. This is why we're such a big hub. So we want to look further into the future. Together with the Russian government, with the federal government, we are working to set up a big campus, a student campus which would bring it all together. Well, again, there is words and there is action. And this camp campus will not just be a place where there will be dorms for students. No. And by 2020, we need to attract up to 10,000 foreign students. We need to build dorms, we need to build 
занятий, но в том числе мы должны построить совместные лаборатории, которые будут участвовать в образовательных компаний, The Great University Project is one of the tools. We need to align their strategy. It's a voluntary basis and to get aligned on a service basis. And for the region, you have one stop shop, not 16, but one stop shop. A campus is your window that would attract the right capital, attract the right companies. So we fine-tune that system. You're right, interagency communication. And that could be a great role model of uh, interagency cooperation. And we really expect uh, that the federal authorities would chip in, that the business community would chip in. So it means that there has to be the private sector and the public sector. So the higher education ministry needs to provide the funding and the business community needs to provide the funding, and I'm sure that will yield a perfect result. And I'd like to really say thank you to the Parliament. 600 million have been earmarked in our budget for this project. So it's not some fairy tale, it's not uh, some sandcastle, it's a project that we've been waiting from VEB too. I'll just remind uh, the audience of uh, your position. So we've done our share, the ball is on your side. Well, VEB is now working with the Ministry of Higher Education and we definitely want to have a pilot project in the Tomsk region and we'll then roll it out in other regions. So I'm sure that concerted efforts will help us to come to a very good outcome. And now quick questions and quick answers. Please, yes or no? No comments. No extended commentary. Well, maybe we will have to ask complex questions. Will the region attract, engage the university in specific uh, projects and will you allocate uh, subsidies? Yes, as I said earlier. So the answer was yes. Yes. The project 5100 is over. And you won't get any extra funds for getting into the top places and rankings. How can you further grow in the rankings? Is it still a relevant job for you? Will the university do something to grow further? Well, it's a complex question. Okay, yes. Well, is it still relevant for you? Look at it as if it was a mirror uh, that uh, gives us an idea of uh, what we look like. We know that uh, governors are measured by various uh, KPI, 
eyes and uh, the way they fulfill presidential decrees. There are not that many KPIs, but do you think uh, we should add another one uh, that would be based on the level of uh, universities and uh, the level of uh, popularity of the universities. <laughs> we will relay your opinion uh, to the authorities. Well, that brings us to the end of the first part of the session. I think we have good, interesting plans, and uh, our conversation was very interesting. We see that uh, our guests are a really good team. I hope that uh, they will continue to work hand in hand like they did before. And now we are going to launch another round of voting. And, uh, this is going to uh, be relevant uh, to the next guests that we have today. Here is the question, what is the main role of universities as partners of regional authorities and of corporations that work on a specific territory? Uh, training of uh, human resources, research and uh, development work for the local industry, that is the second option, and the third option is uh, acting as an analytical center for development of the region. What is the role that universities should play? What is their role as partners of the regions? While uh, the uh, voting goes on, we are going to make a short break. We thank our guests and uh, now we are going to have the next pair of panelists joining us. We continue our session that deals with the development of universities and regions. Uh, initially, uh, we talked about the 
на конкретно взятой территории. И, безусловно, такое развитие происходит вокруг каких-то глобальных проектов. И один из таких проектов уже достаточно давно декларировано, что на территории будет создание научно-образовательных центров мира. Я всегда мировой уровень, потому что, мне кажется, что мировой уровень должен служить лидером мира. Deserve uh, before they give you that name. Samara is quite good in setting up research centers and universities. I have a question for you: Is it possible to create a world-class establishment in your region, and what kind of risks do you see in doing that? Uh, we had quite a lot of debates in the ministry, and I always wondered what is the economic model of this project. Uh, a project uh, wouldn't uh, fly if there are no parties that are properly motivated, uh, that are very interested in accomplishing the mission. So what uh, kind of environment uh, do you have in Samara? Is there a real motivation for doing this? Um, thank you very much to the organizers of the Gaidar Forum. Despite uh, all the difficulties, uh, you are still organized this event. This is important uh, for the whole country. This is great for all participants of the uh, forum. We have a lot of politicians, a lot of scientists, educators, and even students here. They are also participating actively, and I congratulate you on this. Now, back to your question, uh, whether we can do it or not. If we did not have faith in that, we wouldn't be doing that. We believe that we can create education centers of world class in Samara region. We understand the risks and we decided uh, to create an inter-regional uh, education center. What makes us confident? in this mission. In our region, we have a number of companies uh, that are known for their world-class achievements. Uh, we have uh, several rocket plants, engine plants. Samara region has been a leader for many decades. The engines uh, that are made in our region several decades ago are still very efficient. Uh, they are some of the best engines in the world. And this makes us confident that we can uh, accomplish a lot. Of of course, uh, you have to really perform well to become known for it. In May of last year, we uh, put together a regional university. Over a year, we have uh, implemented a system of management. We invited a number of universities to work together with us. Uh, those are universities that have uh, skills and knowledge uh, in the fields that present most interest to us. Uh, we have uh, collaboration with universities from nine different regions, including Moscow and St. Petersburg. We have set ambitious tasks, and uh, we really set our targets very high. I uh, can uh, tell you that we are interested in developing uh, engine building technologies. We uh, want to develop digital technologies, and uh, we have a lot of uh, success stories in end-to-end -end technologies. Uh, we can brag a number of achievements. The digital platform for engine building will reduce the uh, time span for new engine development. Uh, it would also help to reduce the uh, test uh, period. Uh, this is a very uh, big, ambitious task, and we work hand in hand with our partners. We are developing new gas generators. Uh, they have very good performance. They are some of the best. Uh, you have probably heard that uh, hydrogen is uh, the fuel of the future. There's been a lot of discussions about that. We are participants of the Hydrogen Valley project. Uh, we work on a number 
of alternative uh, fuel projects. Storage of hydrogen is a very important task. It's uh, relevant uh, for research organizations in many parts of the world. And uh, we're also uh, interested in development of uh, remote sensing uh, systems, satellite systems. Uh, we are looking to build uh, very small uh, satellites that could help us get a lot of new data on um, Earth that, that would be very helpful to the national economy. Uh, the ambitions are very high, and uh, we also understand the risks associated with this project. These are long-term projects, and of course, you cannot live on enthusiasm alone. Uh, such projects have to be very well coordinated. Uh, regional government uh, does uh, quite a lot. Uh, our colleagues from uh, Mordova, Perm region, and several other regions are uh, very supportive of this initiative. They have a lot of energy, and uh, like any project, this uh, project also uh, has uh, certain difficult points. We see risks associated with uh, sanctions that have been imposed on our country. There are risks associated with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we have cooperation with uh, many organizations. I see that you're looking at your watch. Uh, well, it's uh, not that. I'm looking at the results of voting uh, that we have launched a while ago. Uh, there's also a risk of brain drain. We realize that we need to give people an opportunity uh, to show their best. Uh, we need uh, to give people an opportunity to reveal their potential. We have several R&D centers, engineering centers. Uh, we work on a improvement of uh, urban environment. Well, the systems that you have created uh, were created due to your efforts. Uh, we uh, see that you have uh, gotten in touch with five regions. You started from scratch, and now you have built quite a piece of machinery uh, that is making very good progress. Uh, I would like to change the uh, angle of our discussion. There was a question posted. What is the main role of a university in a region? Most uh, of the respondents uh, said that uh, it's uh, human resources training. More than 30 percent, 35 percent of respondents said that uh, universities should act as expertise uh, centers uh, that help regional development. Uh, what would you say about this? Uh, we would like to get a second opinion about the development uh, of universities uh, in a region. Before I turn it over to Vladimir and ask him uh, about his vision, let me ask this. Uh, I want to ask the governor uh, first. There is an opinion that uh, universities uh, have the mission of uh, specialist training. The project that you described uh, is not only about that. Uh, it has bigger uh, tasks, uh, bigger goals. What uh, is your vision of the role of universities uh, in your region? Do you think they should change priorities so that they can become leaders not only in human resources training, but also leaders in R&D? The growth points that you have identified in different uh, industries have uh, been promoted by uh, several companies uh, that uh, work in your region. Of course, universities also make their contribution, but not in the way of research, uh, but rather in training uh, engineers for you. Uh, what do you think is the scientific potential of your universities? I think that you have set the priorities uh, in a very proper way. There's got to be a balance between education and research. We understand what we need. Well, we have a fairly clear picture. There are a lot of new needs. Uh, there will be new professions, uh, new skills uh, emerging in the economy, and uh, the economy needs human resources to support, of, to support that. Uh, 
we are talking about Industry 2.0 and uh, other processes. We need uh, to change, and that change is continuous. We have new presidents in a number of universities, and that also is uh, very relevant uh, to the time we live in. You said that uh, often corporations uh, set forth demands for different types of research, and uh, I agree with that. In Samar region, uh, universities are very proactive. Uh, they develop certain things and then they offer them uh, to corporations. Uh, I apologize, we have a technical issue. Our organizers ask us to uh, take a one-minute break. Uh, you have uh, an issue with the microphone. We are back on air. Uh, we are going to uh, come back uh, to the uh, points that we have talked before, and now I would like to uh, ask uh, a few questions to Mr. Bogatyrev. We have uh, said that uh, we want to make this conversation challenging uh, for our guests. Universities uh, play a big role in your regional projects. They do many different things uh, for the local industry. They work hand in hand with the regional government. What is your vision of the mission of regional administration? It uh, certainly offers support, but there is more to it. Uh, it acts as a partner to universities. What are your expectations? Uh, do you expect funding or other types of help? Uh, what are your expectations for the local administration? Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much uh, for inviting me to this forum. The university today is uh, not just a participant uh, in this uh, project. This is not a government relations project. Uh, this is a very important piece of work for us. Uh, there are nine uh, R&D projects, and we try to uh, participate in all of them, but we are uh, most active in three. Uh, Dmitry has mentioned uh, three projects. Uh, he actually was uh, one of the authors of this initiative. Uh, we remember that. And uh, through that support, we were able uh, to uh, reach out to uh, Rostec, Roscosmos, and Russian Railways, very large corporations. Regional universities, as you probably understand, usually 
work with regional companies or subsidiaries of large corporations uh, that do business in the region. Uh, we were given an opportunity to uh, reach out uh, to the parent companies, uh, to the headquarters of those big uh, corporations. Uh, we presented our projects and uh, uh, they really took off. It's important uh, to have uh, good interest of uh, those corporations, corporations uh, towards our yeah. projects. We uh, certainly конечно, need uh, regional support in different forms. Uh, uh, you mentioned administrative support, and uh, we were getting that. Uh, we uh, received uh, support in uh, getting in touch uh, with the headquarters of largest uh, corporations in the country. There are several projects uh, that are funded uh, from the federal uh, budget, and uh, there's never enough Money, uh, that, uh, some money from the region would be very instrumental. We have uh, enjoyed that already. I can name several uh, projects where the region has been very helpful. Uh, the region offers grants uh, to students, offers other types of uh, uh, help. The regional government has invested 80 million rubles in uh, a garden. Uh, you may wonder uh, what a garden has to do with this. I think it's very important uh, to make universities uh, nice and comfortable. We want to build a comfortable environment uh, in a university, in a region that would attract uh, young men and women from different parts of the country. Uh, from other parts of the world. We uh, have very big plans. I understand and uh, I agree that uh, this is important. We have a system of uh, grant uh, provision for young uh, scientists, for researchers. We also pay for a lot of lab equipment for universities. Uh, gentlemen, uh, we have several trick questions for you about the kinds of help uh, that you are ready to provide and what you expect to get. Uh, we have already covered some of those points. Uh, we talked about the expectations. We know that the region uh, is uh, very helpful uh, to the local uh, universities. Let me uh, give a few numbers. Uh, we know that Samara is uh, growing its potential. The number of people with university education has grown uh, twofold uh, over 20 years. Uh, we're talking about 16 to 30 percent growth. Uh, in Samara, they have several uh, very nice universities. We have the president of one university uh, here in this session. And uh, here comes the question. Uh, Dmitry, uh, do you think uh, there is a match between uh, the uh, growing performance and the growing regional economy? Obviously, uh, your region is doing very well economically. Uh, you are amongst the leaders uh, in science and in uh, industry. Uh, Samara is uh, doing very well. How do you want uh, to utilize this growing uh, human potential and scientific potential? Uh, you said 30 percent. That is below the average Russian level, uh, which is uh, 34 percent. We have 36.3. We have uh, the uh, level of education higher than average for Russia. 36.3 uh, was the latest number uh, that I know of. Uh, we have uh, seen the growth uh, by 1.7 times over 20 years, and uh, the education uh, level is really higher than average. This is not uh, to say that other regions are not doing enough. Uh, we have a lot of uh, manufacturing companies, uh, a lot of R&D organizations uh, in our region. Uh, look at Togliati agglomeration. Uh, this is a real uh, industrial center. Uh, this is one 
one of the biggest urban agglomerations in the country outside of capital cities. Uh, we have a lot of people with university education. We have uh, very big ambitions. We are doing a lot with the Russian railways. We are getting support uh, from the EP. We are looking into building a high-speed rail uh, system. Uh, and that is going to uh, change uh, the environment in all of the region. I hope that we will be able uh, to uh, make it all happen. Of course, there is a link uh, that is an answer to your question. Uh, we have statistics that prove that uh, we uh, have a high uh, share of uh, manufacturing products. Uh, in the past, we had 8% uh, uh, of manufacturing product uh, in our uh, overall production. Now uh, that uh, has uh, grown uh, from 23 uh, to 24%. Uh, we have a lot of high-tech jobs in the region. We uh, see an increase in the regional, uh, gross regional product. Uh, we are building an innovative economy. We have a lot of uh, people that have uh, higher education uh, that uh, proactively uh, develop uh, such things. And uh, that is definitely uh, appreciated. Uh, we do very much uh, to uh, help our uh, universities, our schools. Uh, this was the year of science and technology, and this was important. Uh, this is the year of the 60th anniversary of the first manned flight into space, and uh, Samara is the space capital uh, of Russia. We are going to have uh, several big events uh, that we'll be hosting in Samara. We are very happy that uh, Samara plays a big role in building uh, space technologies. Uh, we have the year of science, the year of uh, uh, space technologies. You should probably organize a forum in your region. Uh, yes, we uh, can say that uh, higher education does not uh, guarantee employment. Uh, we have unemployment issue. Uh, we know that uh, knowledge is important, but uh, amongst the 28 people with the higher education, many people do not have relevant uh, skills. I'm not saying that 28 percent of uh, graduates uh, of universities uh, do not have uh, sufficient skills. But but uh, this is definitely an area of concern. You said uh, a very appropriate thing. Uh, we uh, see that you are staying on top of things. You know the situation in the region, and that is great. Uh, it's important to coordinate uh, everything that uh, is going on in the region. You have a lot of uh, uh, space equipment manufacturing in your region, and uh, uh, Probably it uh, makes sense to think uh, what universities can do to support your ambitions, what uh, they can do for the future of the region. Uh, I want to uh, ask uh, Vladimir a question. The governor is responsible for the region. He is also the uh, president of the supervisory board of uh, a number of universities. In many Russian universities, when uh, new projects come about, uh, Samara is very responsive uh, to new initiatives. But back to the university, when you uh, create new plans uh, for the future, you uh, set objectives, uh, you look at uh, achievements of other universities in our country and abroad. You compare yourself uh, to peers. You probably uh, have partnerships with uh, universities in uh, different countries. Uh, who are your partners? Can you name a few? Yes. 
В предыдущей программе, в которой участвовал университет, это был проект 5.100. Там ставился тех или иных мест Но в новой программе, которая будет университет, программа лидерства, приоритет 2030. Uh, right now, uh, uh, соответственно, приоритет смещается. Здесь уже новое место выходит не достижение в рейтингах и продвижении, а сотрудничество с индустриальными партнерами, работа на промышленности. И, соответственно, в новой стратегии университет теперь акцент будет ставить не на продвижение в рейтинге, so не на достижение каких-то мест, а именно на работу с индустриальными партнерами. И в новой своей partners. стратегии According to our new strategy, as we discussed it internally, the biggest areas of focus will still remain aerospace, and our motto is space for life. We'll continue to promote that ambition. Russia is a space nation, and Samara is. The capital of the space industry. So if you look at our competitors, or partners, they are aerospace universities. Purdue University in the US, Surrey University in the UK, Beihan University in China. We look at them, we try to be ahead of them, we try to catch up with them. We talked about Rostech, Russian Railways, Roscosmos, Russia's space agency, these are our partners in Russia. As for the region itself, we work with the key university, like Toliati State University and Samara State Technical University. These are the two universities. And as part of the educational center, we will align our strategies. So we have top-level officials watching us and heads of different universities. And again, we don't just have governors, we have Russia's leading regions. And in order to secure your leadership for you and for others, so that your colleagues could have a look, so that you, they view it as a role model. We have prepared some provocative questions, very short, yes or no. No extended commentary is allowed. Well, you actually responded to one of the questions. My question was, as part of that world leading center, do you have the funding earmarked in your original budget? The answer was yes. Владимир, we have some data for university. You have 20% uh, of your, that's the share of research in your revenue. Do you believe you can boost the share of uh, research in your revenue? In commercial contracts. Yes. Great. <laughs> well, you are head of uh, research at this university, and it's a great answer. Well, usually research, revenue comes from state contracts, but we definitely need to focus more on commercial co contracts. No, it's 50-50. At our university. Well, we need to dramatically increase that. That's our goal, that's part of our strategy. And our technical university has an even larger share of research in their, in their revenue. So there are some role models we can look to. So my next question is a follow-up on what we discussed in, for the Tomsk region. Is your region ready to take part in PPPs? And as an aside, VEB is ready to come up with the project to promote hubs and campuses in Russia. Is the Samara no, uh, region yeah. ready to <laughs> join this project? <laughs> Definitely, yes. Last year, the Samara region has been ranked as the top region in PPPs. Well, we used to be top three, top five, but in 2019 we were the top one. 
Поэтому, безусловно, да, нам понятны механизмы. Нормативному регулированию They have some excessive buildings in educational establishments. Did you do research? Did you do assessment? We need to bring, build these brick and mortar establishments. That's what they say. But what I say is that we first need to do a survey, an inventory of what we have. One of the most innovative centers is located in our medical university, and that's in the basement. Of the anatomy, faculty of anatomy. They, it's not just prototype. These are commercialized projects, which was praised by, inspected by the ministers. So the brains, that's what we need, not just brick and mortar buildings. Definitely, we need an ecosystem. We will propose a project to VEB, to VEB which will definitely be economically viable, it will be feasible. Still, Still, I wanted to ask a question on PPPs. Is the region ready to take part in the PPPs, where it will be a private company that will own the facility? Definitely. Absolutely. Thank you. Currently, we focus on the concession model, but not all concessions are efficient. This is why we wanted to attract foreign investors. Now, actually, we can use Samara as a yeah. Your region as a run, as a pilot run, and then we'll ask other regions to have a look at your experience. I'd like to run a second poll. Who leads the uh, collaboration? Who should lead the collaboration between the university and the regional government? It's the regional government. Answer A. Answer B. That's university. And answer C. That's the federal government, the Russian government that defines the development of the region. And answer E, the business community that sets the requirements, sets the demand for the university. That's it for this part of the session. Thank you so much, our colleagues. We move on to our third block. Stay safe.
Антон Андреевич, добрый день. Мне довелось этим летом... Антон Алиханов, welcome. This summer I visited the Kaliningrad region for the first time. С Димой Гужелем, моим другом. I uh, did uh, some uh, paddleboarding uh, with my friend along a nice river. Really enjoyed it. Usually they say that uh, the Kaliningrad region is a Russian westernmost fortress, foothold, and it's much easier for students in that region to leave Russia to go abroad. You can say the same about. Uh, Как вы думаете, young scientists, and not just young scientists, do you have any competitive edge to become a next exporter of uh, education services? And how should the city environment change? What do universities need to do? Thank you, colleagues. Thank you for having me. You're right to a certain extent. As for the proximity to the borders, the frequency for uh, visits to Poland, Lithuania, Germany, well, it's much difficult today. Yes, it is. But unfortunately, it's a separate story. We still have those boys and girls who uh, study abroad and they have issues in going there and coming back. I don't want to dig deeper into it, we try to assist them, it's an important issue for us. As for a competition for our minds, for talents within Russia and for foreign students, we have a clear trend. There are more and more people coming from other regions and from other countries. We are on the sea and we have great competencies, what we can offer in terms of maritime technology, I mean, the Baltic University and other institutions. There are other professions which are in demand. We have a lot of people coming from Morocco, Tunisia, India, Iran, China. Like those who are interested in becoming fishermen, for example, or fisheries operator. So we, previously we had 30% of foreign students right, and f uh, people from other regions. Currently this share is 40%. Standardized exam that we introduced in Russia did make a difference uh, for uh, people from other regions. Uh, they can now choose uh, a university based on this score they receive. As for uh, the Baikal Federal University and other universities in the region, they compete not with foreign universities, they compete with Moscow, St. Petersburg. But there are people who go to Gdańsk in Poland or Berlin, but we really capitalize on our proximity to European countries. We set up a lot of uh, networks. We set up uh, ABB Engineering Center. It's a well-known Swiss company that works on robotics, engineering, electronics. And we set up a collaborative program together with the University of Ostrava, with the Tomsk University, by the way, with other universities. That we are like a bridge to Europe we can, that allows us to use and capitalize on the proximity to European nations. We are becoming European University on our own. We provide the same quality of education and we enable people to work either in Russia or to go abroad. So we're quite competitive and appealing. Well, actually going back to the status of a European university, we know that uh, you have the longest history. Yes, if you look at uh, the if you count the years of history of the Königsberg universities, yes, you're right.
Well, Mr. Lehanov, we do a poll every time in every block. So, who plays the role of a leader in the collaboration between universities and regional administrations? And definitely the majority of the votes is for the regional authority. And the second place, that's uh, regional universities, they need to come together to create breakthrough technology or disruptive technology. Well, it's almost a parity. I wouldn't say there is uh, any majority or minority. It's like almost 35 percent, 36 percent. That's roughly the same. Well, the least of the respondents expect support from the federal government. But that's good, really. Well, yes, there is some expectations from the vis-a-vis uh, -vis the private sector, but it's not the federal government. That speaks volumes. These are federal universities, right? You know, the Baltic Federal University, it's a federal one, that's part of its name. But you work, it, work, it operates in a local environment, and it needs to be in alignment uh, with uh, all the regional, local stakeholders. We have the rector of the Baltic Federal University, Mr. Fadraf, is online. Yes, colleagues, I can hear you well, thank you. Your university is the oldest university in Russia with a uh, unique environment. Does it help you to attract students? What are the prospects in terms of research and education? Just recently, you signed uh, a document to join a consortium in Nizhny Novgorod. So these are the this network of border um, cross-border educational establishments. Well, it's a broad concept, broad question. I'll try to be hands-on. First off, our university, well, thank you for the compliment, first of all. Our university is actually 10 years old. In 2011, we got the status of a federal educational establishment. It got the first investment, the first major investment since 1946. And Mr. Alekhanov listened uh, to our new strategy at the latest session of the supervisory board and said he's ready to invest into making that strategy happen since starting from 2022. There are three simple ways of how we can actually make it and each of them is almost is ready for implementation. First, it's a project-based university. That's our ambition. Each graduate can work with complex solutions. Uh, each of them can define their own career journey, and each of them is ready to work as part of any project. Second, it's University Troyes, the Troyes University, as we call it. It's a new term. It's a really all-encompassing university. We fall back on the legacy East Prussian legacy, the fact that it's an exclave and the fact that it's a very important region for Russia geopolitically. And a third, we want to have a holding, engineering holding. Unlike the situation in 50 years ago, we don't want to be locked in our regional cooperation. We have a multi-track policy. We work with partners and stakeholders in Europe, in Asia and elsewhere. 
But the key focus will remain regional development. This is why together with the region, regional authorities, we will be aiming to implement a number of projects and we'll have uh, industrial partners that are already on board. Mr. Alihanov, I'm sure, will talk about that. We have the biggest agro holding of Russia and the CIS and, and Soya. It's a very important project. Thanks to our governor, the Canadian region will host a new plant on solar plants and they want to have an R&D department at our university. That's just the tip of the iceberg of what we have been able to do with Mr. Alihanov and the first steps have been very successful. Thank you so much for your insights. This link between the region and the university has been really very successful. And I listened and I looked at the transcript of the latest meeting of the supervisory board. These are ambitious plans indeed. The first plan will feature the human tech valley in the Kaliningrad region that will definitely focus on human capital, talents, biomedicine and other ambitious priority areas. And by 2030, you plan to increase the number of students to a significant level. You want to have the share of foreign and students from other regions up to 60%. So you start from a low base, like 900 students from abroad. Now, you gave us the reasons of why it is that way, but you still have lofty ambitions. And in order to implement any ambitious project, you need to have the right capacity. Mr. Fedorov, where will those resources come from? Whenever you have any strategic project in mind, you always need to think of how you can implement it. You need to have the sources of funding and other resources. How much, what is the breakdown? How much do you expect from the federal government, from the regional government, from the private sector? What is the breakdown? That's an excellent question. Mr. Alihanov likes to uh, interact with uh, the stakeholders via the so-called investment club. And he told a story once, investment emerges not when people are asleep, not go on holidays, but are seeking that money, seeking that investment. So that we just need to actively seek those in investments. We're trying to change the attitude to the university. We believe that the region is a unique investment opportunity. It's a unique research and development and education hub, and it can definitely benefit Russia in general in supplying unique R&D solutions and training unique R&D specialists. Well, we need definitely to keep in mind that R&D specialist is the best way forward. As for the breakdown of investment, and again, we are talking about an environment, it's an environment solution. We want to make a major contribution for 100 years ahead, not just build a campus, dorm. No, it's an environment solution, it's an environment-based solution. And definitely PPPs will come into play and play a key role. The industrial partners are referred to, and I mentioned two partners. They are interested in commissioning R&D services, and they're also interested in contributing to the regional development for a hundred years ago, for a hundred years ahead. We'll build new dorms, we'll have the federal minister, 
who will come and we invite you as a top official at VEB to convince you that our vision of how we manage our future and of how this investment could change the meaning of higher education by combining digital and offline is one of the best solutions. We will use every opportunity to do that. And as a sum up, I believe that the investment shall be split the following way. The third comes from the private sector, the third comes from the federal and regional budget, and a third comes from loans, borrowings. That's my position, that's my view. Mr. Alihanov, over to you. Is the region ready to participate in such a project, and will there be any yield from it? Uh, any return. We understand you have limited resources, education and science. That's a jurisdiction, the mandate of the federal government. But how ready are you to participate in this project? Mr. Lashkevich, let's start with the fact that we don't have oil. We have offshore oil. But again, we don't get anything from it. We cannot uh, start ex exploring oil just like they did in Saleh Khalin uh, a lot of years ago. So we need to partner with science, uh, with research, otherwise we won't have anything. We can't just support the business community to have uh, huge uh, R&D, huge innovative companies. No, we definitely need to nurture our talents at the university level first, and that's the way forward. What's important for me is to have that collaboration with the business community. So it's a trilateral collaboration, the regional authority, the business and community and the universities. We need to engage the scientists and researchers who are already present in, in the university and we can also help to attract new scientists. And it's really easy to work with young researchers, the average uh, age of researchers is 36 years. That's at the, the Baltic Federal University. So we can attract them. We can bring them from other regions. And it's much better for us as the Kalingrad region. Surprisingly, we supported the university financially in, for example, building a new swimming pool. And we had to you know, issue grants, do a lot of paperwork, to do a lot of bureaucratic activities, simply because this law does not allow us to find the university directly. So there are areas where we could work together. I wanted to this university to have a better say in training school children or we would like to assist the university financially in upgrading their physical infrastructure so it could also extend to schools but I can't do it under law so we need to amend our legislation and we need to empower our regions to do that. Not all regions have the capacity to do that financially, but you need to have this legal opportunity. But that's something that the federal government needs to think about. Now, according to your poll, the region and the universities are the key drivers of this collaboration, the drivers of economic growth, regional growth. The federal, we shouldn't expect anything from the federal government, or it's you know somewhere down the, uh, the list, but you just need to empower the university, or the power of the region, 
бюджет ежегодно по 200 миллионов рублей. Мы готовы... 200 миллион рублей будут выделены на аннуальном базе, в создании коммерчески выявленные проекты, исследовательские проекты, вместе с бизнес-коммунитой, в создании лабораторий, которые будут использованы бизнесмен для специфических проектов, и которые будут помогать новых инвесторов. У нас есть несколько минут до конца нашей сессии. Просто хочу задать вопрос. So we had two governors before you, Samara from the Samara region and from the Tomsk region, and those governors also chair the supervisory boards of universities, just like you. And the rector set the bar really high of what they can do for the region. Well, but usually it's, a, it's like tango, it takes two to tango, but what can you do? What's your vision? What's your personal contribution to the development of universities? Baltic Federal University is the supplier of uh, officials for public, admin, public administration, public employees, and also for the private sector. So the quality of education for us is critical because that quality, that education will shape the quality of our teams, of, of our teams at the government and at our best companies. So we need to have the best teachers, the top curricula. So for me, it's a priority as the chairman of the supervisory board. And second, I know we, I, I can see often some lack of funding for certain areas, and we are ready to fill those gaps. We are ready to take, spend our time, our funding, and our own minds on it. My team, the, the team of the Ministry of Economy at the regional level, together with the university, is looking for possible grants from different federal ministries. And we actually secured a number of grants for hundreds of millions of rubles for research and development in the interest of our industrial companies. So this is facilitation. We mutually, we mutually complement each other in the interests of science and research and in the interests of the business community. And that means in the broader sense, in the interest of our people. The industry will create new jobs and will invest more. And it will benefit our people, our communities. Definitely we need the support of the federal government. We need the support of Minister Falkov, the Minister of Higher Education and Research. But we shouldn't really focus only on the funding from the federal government. We definitely want our local project to get federal support, but we can use our local funding, our local resources, and we can demonstrate some results, some outcomes, and that would convince the federal government that we can create value, that we can be efficient, and they would realize that they need to chip in and help us. So that could help to create a synergy with the federal authorities. Now, just one follow-up question. I listened to a discussion of the heads of smaller universities and private universities, and many of the rectors asked for great autonomy and independence. And I know that there used to be an idea raised, and I support it heartily, to make uh, big universities non-commercial organizations so they no longer belong to the state. Are you a supporter of this idea? Do you think that's feasible? Can good universities be independent? 
I can talk from my experience. I do not know about the debates that you refer to. I have an experience of uh, working with uh, federal level officials that uh, are also on the supervisory board of our university. Our initiatives are not getting blocked for political reasons. Uh, we reason we uh, weigh up all the things that we want to launch, we act as a good supportive uh, assistance to universities. So uh, we see that uh, different branches of uh, government are making their contribution to the development of the university, and I think that this works, and we should not be uh, changing it uh, when there is no real need. Uh, I have several quick questions for you. Uh, you should give us a yes or no answer. We don't have time for any comments. Uh, helping employment uh, in the region is one of your focuses. Do you uh, want to include uh, the uh, Baltic Federal University uh, in your employment uh, encouragement program? We have uh, regional funds that have have been uh, allocated uh, for the companies that will offer uh, internship opportunities for your university. In the budget of the Baltic Federal University, uh, the revenues uh, that they get from R&D work are not high. They amount to about 6%. Do you think uh, that share is going to grow up to 15 or 20%? Uh, yes, indeed, 15.6% uh, is what we have seen last year. Uh, you have wrong information. Uh, you should check out your source. Uh, okay, probably there's greater potential uh, for the future. I uh, have a question that we have raised earlier during the first round of voting. Do you think that uh, the share of your graduates that get jobs in Moscow, in St. Petersburg, or in other countries that leave the region uh, is a good indication of the uh, quality of a university. This is not an indicator of the quality of a university. That just uh, is a picture of the uh, federal structure of our country. Do you think that an effective university would uh, train people that will be moving around the country or can jo get jobs abroad? I don't think we should set any barriers uh, for our graduates. Well, uh, there are two opinions. They are not contradictory, though. And my final question, uh, it's a quick question for the governor. Do you believe that uh, governors uh, should uh, have another uh, KPI uh, linked uh, to the uh, performance of regional universities? If a university is doing well, uh, then the governor uh, is performing better. We had uh, many debates about this, and I think uh, we should create a good environment uh, for the business community. I think uh, stability uh, is important uh, at the regional level as well, but uh, it's not uh, something that uh, we uh, look at specifically. Uh, we uh, work in many different fields. We have a very good collaboration uh, with the president of the university, but uh, that is not always the case in all parts of the country. Well, that's why we invited uh, the heads of regions and uh, heads of universities that uh, can give uh, fine examples of working together. Thank you very much. This brings us to the end of our uh, session. I think uh, the answer 
partners that you have given to us were a good demonstration of the partnership uh, between uh, regional authorities and regional universities. It's uh, very nice to see this beautiful picture. Uh, thank you very much.